So I'm sharing it. The, the, do I need to do anything else? No, you have to start the screen sharing. I, we cannot see your slides yet, but no? I'm starting now to, to welcome everybody. Okay, and now can you see the, the screen? Yeah, maybe you click to the icon next to the yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, exactly. like so ladies yes. and gentlemen, a warm welcome to another Virtual Happy Hour 3.0 session. Today is a very special moment because one of my favorite countries will be presented from Fatima Pina. I was asking my then-to-be wife in Portugal whether she wants to be my wife, and um, she said yes. And that's why Portugal is a very important country for me. So, Fatima, stage is yours, and I'm very keen to know what have I missed maybe while being so often in your lovely country. Okay, thank you so much, Daniel, and everyone that is attending the the presentation so I'm, I'm i'm i will try to do my best of course i can talk about everything because that's with your country is the same so we don't have a time so for you can't showing talk everything. About everything we exclude football we don't talk about football that's right i took it out uh, <laughs> on purpose so no problem <laughs> no these are nothing 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 very good so okay so i will start by um saying a few words about me. So I live in Lisbon for more than 30 years, more or less. Um, I am married for 27 years. Uh, I have no children. Uh, my professional life has been, uh, I would say, at the beginning of my career, I was in international um, organizations, let's say European Union, European Parliament, and uh, that, that sense. And then I moved to the IT area. Uh, and since then, I've been working in the IT industry, uh, especially in the business intelligence areas and analytics, and a few years also in the air transport industry. Uh, I love to travel and, uh, of course, to know a lot about uh, history of the countries and culture. My hobbies are more, you know, walking. Uh, I'm uh, quite <laughs> lazy in that side. So I walk, I walk a lot and I like to walk especially along the seaside. I also do some cycling, but not that much, more walking, I would say. So this is about me and I think this is, if you want to know me better, then we can talk more, of course. I would start with some facts about Portugal. So uh, we have here two pictures. One uh, of the top is uh, a picture from Lisbon, from the, seas uh, from the river Tagos, and the other one below is from Porto. So, Portugal is the oldest nation state in Europe. Uh, it became a kingdom in 1139. It has born, yeah, very, very early in the beginning, after conquering, let's say, the, the, the territory to the uh, Leon, Castilla, to the, the Spanish uh, kingdoms. And uh, this, since then, the borders are, have hardly changed. So, we have stayed the, the same country, the same size since then since 1297. Uh, this is when uh, the Spanish uh, signed the treaty that ended Algarve to Portugal. That is today, let's say, our touristic, more touristic place. Our first king is Afonso uh, I, and he came to power in 1143. So since then, we have been a monarchy and a kingdom for 800 years, and in 1910, we became a republic. That's when we have also a revolution to change to, to republic. We can say that we are also the oldest diplomatic alliance in the world, and the, this alliance is the Anglo-Portuguese alliance. So between the two countries, we have signed a treaty, and they merged back in 1373. We had then uh, a disruption of 60 years. It was... Uh, from 1480, uh, sorry, for 1580 to 1640, where we had uh, been under the, um, the regime of uh, Spain. So we were uh, attached to the to Spanish regime, and so we lost this kind of Anglo-Portuguese uh, treaty. But then we beca it became again, and we recovered it again, and since then we have still in force. Another fact is about geography that I'm going to talk a little bit also. It's the, so Portugal is situated in the southwest of Europe, as we know. Uh, we only have borders with Spain, 
And then we have also Madeira and the Souris archipelagos. That are the islands that uh, we can see some of the pictures on the right. That is the the one on the top and the, is the Souris, and below is Madeira. So Azores is nine islands that we have in the Atlantic as well. And then in the Madeira archipelago, we have only two. One is Funchal and the second one is Porto Santo. Porto Santo is the part where we have uh, the beach area and it's very, it's like the waters are like in the, um, in the Caribbean because normally the water in Portugal is quite cold <laughs> because it's Atlantic Ocean. And uh, Madeira, the Funchal is more known for its flowers, for the cruise, for the, um, you know, for all the, the, the festivities in the New Year's Eve and uh, things like this. Then we have the population. So Portugal is quite uh, small and it's around 10 million uh, inhabitants. We are getting also very old population, not too many births and this is being and it's becoming a, a very big issue. And uh, this, this is um, a common situation along Europe and uh, and uh, as you know, so in uh, most of the population resides in the greatest Lisbon, so around 1.9 million and the rest, uh, the second city in Portugal is Oporto in the north. Um, most of the people, they live, of course, in the coastal regions because it's easier and they can uh, they increase in terms of uh, not only geography, tourism, but also um, the economy can be better there and they can have more, um, um, let's say, jobs, let's, uh, I would say, um, that would be the main reason as well. The religion is majority is Catholic. So we, you can see that it's 88.4%, but the Portuguese constitution, of course, guarantees religion's freedom to everyone. And we have many, many different religions, religions in Portugal. But the, the main, uh, the majority is really Catholic. The language, Portuguese, so Latin root, uh, we have around uh, 250 million people in every continent. It, it's the fifth most spoken language in the world and the third wow. in the European, yes. It's because also we have uh, all the former colonies and also Brazil and uh, so we still have um, many, many people. We are 10 million, but we have 250 million people speaking the, the language, but, as but you can it's see. possible in Europe because I thought German, French and English would be, and Spanish would be more than Portuguese in Europe. Yes. It, but you know it's fifth and the third uh, if you consider European languages. Well, I, I also had this impression. I have been looking around and in fact this is what it's it's been uh, considered in, in the Portuguese language. Oh, but, uh, it's Ronaldo who is making a lot of babies in every country. <laughs> That's why there are so many maybe. I'm just... I don't think so, stupid. yes. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't make them, he just orders them by, <laughs> by a catalog, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh my God, that's true, that's true. He, he needs to score, so that's the reason. <laughs> oh. And then the climate, of course, we have a very good climate. Normally, uh, we it's not cold. We have probably snow in the north where... Um, I came from or where I was born, but it's not too much. It's very, you know, it snows, let's say, uh, 10 days a year or something like that, you know, and then uh, the snows comes down and then it just uh, vanishes. We have to go to other countries if we want to do some skiing. Um, although we have already skiing as well, but most of the times we have to do it with the uh, um, other kind of snow, not the real one. <laughs> so this is the climate. Uh, it's changing the climate, of course, as well. So uh, let's see. Economy. Uh, I would say and uh, that uh, port wine is our famous export. It's, it's changing a lot now because we also, well, we have very, very good wines. We just have, don't have the right marketing, I, I, I guess. And uh, but now it's changing, especially to the United States, to Canada, to other countries. We are um, exporting a lot of wines. 
but let's say that our our um, important and famous one is the national drink is the port wine. Uh, we this is um, produced in the north of Portugal, uh, near the Douro Valley, and uh, we have uh, well the biggest consumers I would say the, the, are the English and also the French, but mainly the English uh, due to our alliance and everything. We have many English people living in Portugal. And the Douro wine is also very tasty. I very, very tasty, in, that's right. In a restaurant from uh, Mozambique in Lisbon, mm -hmm. we had the fantastic yes. Douro red wine. So I was really impressed. Yeah, very, very good. We have very good wines. That's right. Yeah, and Douro region is really one of the best. I would say the best. I, I prefer the, the Douro wine as well. It's very good. It's very And good. what is with um, um, Vino, Vino Verde? Is it ah, also? Yeah. It's also in the north. It's a completely different uh, wine because it's uh, it's only one region that is Minho above Porto, and it's like they call it green uh, green wine because it's it's um, it's quite frizzy, uh, frizzy and uh, not frizzy but it's frizzy. I mean, it's very good to drink, especially with the with seafood and fish, and uh, it's very fresh. And we only can produce it in the north. It's something that is only uh, produced in Portugal. There are some things that are similar, but it's not the same. And in Portugal, we only produce it in the in the north. But we have other regions. We have Down, we have Alentejo. We have other dif uh, different regions that are really um, dark regions, let's say, the, the, for, for the wine. But it's true. You know the Vinho Verde as well? Well, I'm, I'm more a red wine. Yeah, uh, me too. Admira. But I was just saying, Anusha, she shall um, change her mind and not go to Italy, but rather to Portugal in her vacation. Because we have such great scenery and also the food and all that stuff. And but she's not so strong in wine. So that's why you cannot convince her to taste. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we, I can convince her for the food, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Looking it's forward very to see good. the beauty of the places, uh, more interested yeah. in the nature stuff. So Yes, yes, and nature is very nice because we are, we although we are a very small country, but we have different uh, landscapes, very different ones in the in the south and in the north. Because in the north, you have all the, mountain, the mountains, the green, the, the rivers and all the, you know, the water and everything, waterfalls and so on. And in the south, you have a part that is Alentejo, down uh, south of Lisbon, that is more... Um, it's similar to, to Africa, you see, like, you know, with the wheat, the wheat and uh, very yellow, I would say, and no mountains at all, you know, very flat. It's different landscape. It, it has its beauty in, uh, in one side and it's very calm, but it's very hot in the summer, so it's not very pleasant for summertime <laughs> because it's, it's quite hot. It's pleasant. Not during uh, lunchtime. <laughs> they have to go to fresh. And some people, they just do the siesta at that time uh, from, from that region because it's, uh, they used to work more in, the, um, in agriculture, not in the south. In the no north is more the industry as well. But in the south is more the agriculture. agriculture and it was quite difficult to work during, uh, you know, the, those hours of, uh, of heat. So they had to... They have the habit also to do the siesta like in Spain. Uh, so, and in terms of cork, this is something that we are also um, one of the biggest, or oh, say the largest cork of the forests in Portugal. And this, it's also in this region from south of Portugal, Alentejo. Uh, and we are one of the biggest exporters. And this is something very interesting because nowadays we do lots of products out of cork. And even also, you know, for the, the not uh, not only shoes and bags and some uh, we have also some stylists that are doing some uh, um, coats and things like this. It's very strange, but it's it, it, it's interesting. Um, and it's also protective for the for the floor as a floor uh, for the floors in the houses as well. Um, this is the cork. And then we have uh, Portugal also a world leader as in renewable energies. So nowadays we have already 
uh, let's say that the, all domestic electricity is already covered by renewable sources in Portugal. And we export a lot as well. Uh, and we have very, very innovative projects. And the, the world's largest photovoltaic farms is also in the south of Portugal. It's a town that is Mona, but it's in the south of Portugal. So it's quite good, the, the, the projects that are getting in place. We also bought a very big company in the United States and it's getting bigger and bigger, this kind of projects in Portugal. Um, politics, I would go to politics. So Portugal uh, was the longest dictator, had the longest dictatorship in Europe. We had a dictatorship that went from 26 to 74. And these dictatorships were divided in three uh, different areas. Uh, the biggest one, the biggest period was uh, around 50 years and it was with Salazar uh, that controlled the, the, the country most of the time. The, the first dictatorship we had, it was only two years and it was a military dictatorship. Then we had the second, that was a national dictatorship that took around five years. And then we have the one that is the biggest one and known from Salazar until 74, from 33 to 74. So what he said is that he could uh, not uh, avoid us uh, to suffer from uh, um, hunger, but he could avoid that we would suffer from the, world, the Second World War. And we never, Portugal never entered into the Second World War, and it was due to, to the fact that he, he, he didn't allow us to go. And we, of course, we, we were, have, have poverty and hunger, but not um, war. Um, so it was quite difficult in that time, uh, a very complicated period. And uh, in 74, we had the revolution with the militaries that is co called the Carnation Revolution because all the people that were uh, making the revolution, they were using a Carnation. They never, instead of using a, a gun, they used the Carnation. So they said it was a bloodless coup d'etat because there was no... You know, nobody died. There were no nothing. So it was um, interesting, and they used case because uh, this this was real interesting to have the coup d'état without uh, any any blood. Then we have also um, the information and the fact that Portugal is also a member, a founding member of NATO, and we have been a EU member. At that time, it was European Economic Community from 1986, sorry. Uh, we also entered into a situation that uh, most of the countries went into, as you remember, in 2011, we had a bailout by the EU and the International Monetary Fund because of the crisis. And uh, so it was very, we, we were undergoing very austerity measures with the, for, from the government so that we could recover from, the, from that uh, crisis that we had. And we were successful and it was uh, very well succeeded. So we could get out of the crisis and we even had an... Uh, um, uh, a very good, uh, one of the best results um, in Europe. Uh, but the, the, with the, the COVID, everything changes for everyone. <laughs> so it was very good, but then it was very bad <laughs> again for everyone. Um, we are, we also, uh, this is also important for us because we are a, a Catholic country and uh, it's important that we say that. Uh, we were the sixth European country to allow the same-sex marriage in 2010. So homosexuality uh, was recognized. People can marry uh, since 2010 in Portugal. Okay, and uh, I'm going now to the cultural heritage because uh, FAD. So uh, I think everybody knows about FAD, most of the people. I mean, FAD is a, a national song. Uh, I would say that is something that is uh, known internationally. We've been uh, uh, known uh, inter internationally in every country because Fado is the song that reflects the, the soul of the Portuguese. Normally, we are fatalists. We consider that Fado is um, 
is, is, is our fate, so the fate that people are impossible to escape to the fate. And it's the name of this Portuguese and traditional singing. You know, it also makes part of the UNESCO World Intangible Cultural Heritage. So Fado is, is melancholic. It, u- it uses the Portuguese uh, guitar that you see okay. next to the right. And the, 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 the picture of the, the woman that you see is the person that is known internationally that popularized Fado worldwide, uh, even during the... Um, the um, the dictatorship so she she was the one that went to international to other countries and sang the father in paris uh, olympia uh, everywhere i mean she, she was recognized in madrid in spain they loved father as well so everybody loves i don't like it very much because it's very sad and uh, melancholic so it talks only about sadness loss awfulness resignation so you know you 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 get out um, crying. <laughs> hey, well, what, what, what is the root of that? Why, why the... Hi, Carlos, good to have you with us. Why Hi. is this Fado... Um, what's the origin? Was there some uh, special situation where people were starting to create this music? Or why you are not having a happy music style? Well, we have happy music styles. We have lots of happy music styles, but this, this is the one that became uh, our national uh, flag, I would say, because, in fact, uh, maybe this, this this came from... I, I, I'm not sure about... Uh, it's a good question. I'm not very sure about the, the, the roots. Maybe Carlos knows, but uh, I know that it became... Uh, you know, it, it started from... Uh, I started to sing, uh, her, hearing about Fado mainly after uh, during the during the dictatorship maybe before uh, um, and uh, and it becomes with the because we have two fathers we have heard the father from Lisbon and we have the father from Coimbra that is also some kind of music that is also sad and talks about uh, you know so that and about the fact that we meet, we miss something but I think this is about the fact that we uh, were not uh, happy at that time but i'm not sure maybe i'm I just can, saying maybe carlos can can uh, do you know uh, more i don't know I uh, to be honest i don't 2016 entire europe was totally sad and resignated because yeah, yeah there was european soccer championship and <laughs> i think that made fado very very um trendy in europe isn't yeah. it <laughs> probably Carlos is frozen. <laughs> okay. But you know, it's also very. Uh, I mean, if you hear, if you listen to the father, it's also something that is like um, the roots and the the the, the rhythm. Uh, rhythm is a little bit. Uh, um, I would say like the you know the Arabic uh, also music. It's a little bit like that as well. Uh, and uh, we use the expression uh, about. Uh, you know, the Oshala, it's hopefully if only God could help us. And it's, it comes from the Arabic Inshallah as well. So this is an expression that we use, that we hope, the hopefulness, we don't want to be hopefulness, but we want to to be hopeful. So help us God, you know. Oh, like Carlos, why, why Fado is, is melancholic and so sad and why is it not happy music style? I don't know, but uh, I think the begin the begin of the Fado is uh, because the people in Lisbon. The beginning is it was in Lisbon. After that, they starting in uh, with the students in Coimbra. Uh, they they we always uh, uh, like play is a street a street uh, song, you know. The in the small places who drink wine and they play the the guitar, starting with the, the guitar. And only after the, they starting to 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 sing with the voice, but is a is like tango, is a, a street music, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, is a, in the we have the, some small places here the, to drink and the drink wine called tasca, tasca, you know, tasquinha, mm-hmm. and uh, the people from the the, the neighbors, the Alfama, Moreria. They uh, they sit in the street and uh, they play with the guitar. Um, I think this 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 origin of this uh, Portuguese guitar is from the 
the Arabs, the, the Moros, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what uh, I said, yes. The big, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I, Fatima. And, uh, and Lucas, yes. I, I, that's I, I what don't I don't meant, yes. I don't, I don't feel, you, you talk, you ask Fatima, why uh, Fatima is so, so, so yeah. melancholic mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the Portuguese, they are like that. Not me, but <laughs> 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 the, the, <laughs> normally the Portuguese, they are like that. And we are uh, people, we need to go out for uh, our country. And uh, Fado, uh, a word uh, very strong in Fado is saudade, uh, uh, a word we cannot translate mm -hmm. in the, the other language. It's only a Portuguese word, yes. Yeah, maybe it's because that Fado is And, so, and so you, shouldn't, you shouldn't mix the O with the A and have the different sort order, isn't it? The? If you put the O at the place of the A and the A at the place of the O, in Saudade? It means for the. Oh, ah. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, it. that's it. That's it. That's it. You know. That's you know. Another... Portuguese. You we, know are, Portuguese. We, are, we are not translating this. Huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> you have to put the P. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Sorry, Fatima. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> Please feel free. <laughs> no, I understand. No, but yes, so that is a word. It is on Portuguese and me means um, missing something, missing somebody. Yeah. But yeah. it's a word and everybody knows so that. And in fact, fad with that is just something like that. And we normally the Portuguese people, they, they miss a lot the, the, their country. Uh, they miss everything. Uh, if I go outside or to some countries, I always miss something, even uh, the food or um, the songs or the, the, the weather or what we do normally as a society, you always miss something from your country. But I think this is normal. And, um, and we call the name uh, so that. We always say, oh, I feel so that, you know. And uh, this is the, the, the reason. But uh, as Carlos said, I mean, I, this is something that comes probably from the, from the um, Ara Arabics that we call the modus that lived mostly in, yeah, in, in yeah, Lisbon. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you say also the Oshala, that is the Inshallah from Arab yeah. Arabic. And the word know? Fado comes from the Latin, uh, destiny, destino. Yes. The, yeah. the, everybody have a Our destiny, fight. you know, yeah. everything it's is white. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's it. That's right, that's right. Okay, and then we have the screen of Fado. Sorry, that everybody sorry, uh, Fatima, just tell you. Now yeah. we have a new, a very, very uh, interesting new songwriters, and uh, they are not, uh, they are not melancholic. They they cross the so many, so many uh, roots of uh, another music, and uh, it's really, really interesting. And they call, they 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 sing fado too. Yes, but you know, just to say that the fado is not the only Portuguese song we have in, all over the country. Lots of folklore, and the folklore yeah. uh, music is very, very happy. You dance and cry, and so everything, you know. And uh, it's completely different. It's completely different. Yes. So I'm moving now to the end. So because we were talking about fado, and that's why Carl said as well, we have a different yeah. kind of fado. But this is one fado that is. Uh, the song, um, the music is a little bit different because this was created by the the, the, uni uh, the students in the university from Coimbra. So they use their covers in black, you know, they have their, their guitars as well. And it's very interesting, the fab. It's very beautiful, but it's only sang, song sang by men, only men, the students, yeah. that's all. Yeah. And uh, also do, during the Salazar dictatorship, they used also the fado, you know, as a form of intervention among the, the students, you know, to, to because they were against the dictatorship. And this was a way also to, to create these political movements as well. And because I was talking about Fado and Coimbra, I think it's important to refer that the University of, of Coimbra is the oldest one in Portugal, and it was founded in 1290. And it's one, I mean, one of the oldest in the world and the oldest in Portugal. And it's also interesting to see that uh, the, um, on the right, you can see a picture of the, the library. It's very, very beautiful. It's like it's, it's a museum and it's worth visiting because it's very, very beautiful as well. 
Okay, so it would be it is important also to talk about this because this is our history. It has bad things, good things, <laughs> but let's talk about the good ones, the, the bad things we know we, what they are, and uh, it's, it's related to slavery as well, we will know, which nobody is uh, uh, proud and, or happy about that, but it's a fact and it existed and we have to, to refer it as well. But let's say the important thing here also to, to mention is that Portugal was really uh, a leading European power in the 15th and 16th century. And uh, together with England, France and Spain, we had a lot of friend, uh, influence in economic and cultural and political uh, area. So we were not dominant, not only dominant in the European affairs, but we had a, a very extensive, extensive colonial trading empire around the, uh, all over the world. Because it was, let's say, uh, characterized at that time for, by the Talasocracy. So the most important thing was to have the power over the seas, and Portugal was one of them. Now we are an empire in football. You know, Daniel. <laughs> Much more interesting. <laughs> 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 yeah, I understand you. You broke. When you listen to that, you... <laughs> <laughs> I understand you. Sorry, Fatima. No problem. <laughs> it's always nice to have this kind of comments. <laughs> okay, so... I prefer the, my empire in football, but... <laughs> yeah, well, we, we are not living this empire anymore, so yeah. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. why. <laughs> So at that time, we had the discovery of the sea route and the, to India, and uh, we signed the Treaty of Tordesillas. So the Treaty of Tordesillas, what did was to divide between the two powers, nations outside of Europe, between Portugal and Spain. So they decided to divide the, the, the territory internationally that were not in, in, in Europe between uh, Spain and uh, and Portugal. So one went to the east and the other one went to the west. And the, this was uh, the idea of uh, dividing the world. No? So uh, with the expedition uh, of the Cape Code, the richness of India was also accessible. So we were able to get into India, which was very uh, important and powerful. And all the spices and all the silk and everything, it was one of the biggest imports for um, the, the, the trading all over the world, and uh, and uh, especially for for Portugal and for Europe, uh, and then uh, we went also Vasco da Gama uh, was there, let's say around uh, for uh, 1498. So because there was the discovery of the the, the route to the India to India, the route to India, um, we built a monastery that was the monastery of Geronimus that I will show it uh, later on. It was, uh, you know, to dedicated to this discovery. And then we had also in the spring uh, of uh, 1500, we had Pedro Alves Cabral that discovered the colony of Brazil. Okay, I think this is the most important ones hmm? uh, in terms of uh, impact to, to, to the trading in, in, in the world. I would like to say also that uh, regarding the monuments, we have two monuments that are um, uh, the ones that um, are dedicated to the, to the to discoveries of the 15th and 16th centuries. One is the Padrão of Descobrimentos, that is the one at the left, and that is located uh, along the river as well. So the, the ships departed from there to, to, to explore all the trade with India and the, the Orient. And so this monument is uh, to celebrate, let's say, the Portuguese area, era, age of discoveries. The second picture uh, next to the, the monument is the Compass Rose and Mapa Mundi, which so, shows where the Portuguese went in terms of discoveries and shows all the areas around the world. And it was a gift from the Union of South Africa. Uh, I don't really know very well the, the, the story, sorry for that, but uh, it was a, an offer from, from, from South Africa to, to, the Portuguese, uh, to the Portuguese. So the, the monastery that I was talking about that it was uh, created and celebrated the, the discovery to India is the one that is 
on uh, in the back that you can see after that garden um, on the top of that picture and the, at the bottom of the picture. So now I would like just, you know, to give a flavor of what is uh, interesting because we uh, have so different areas and aspects, not only monuments, but also beautiful landscapes and the regions to discover. And uh, I'm not able to, to, to present everything like you couldn't present your countries, every, every, all the beautiful and nice points. But uh, here on the left, I can uh, show you uh, some monuments in the Lisbon area. So the, on the top is this uh, Mosteiro dos Jerónimos that I, I was referring to about the, the discovery age. Then we have the, the Blaine Tower. It's very beautiful too. You can see it was also related to the to the discoveries where we could see and uh, the sea and the, the ships uh, uh, going over. Nowadays it's uh, a, a museum and it's beautiful to go there and uh, have a beautiful uh, view from from the from the bridge and from the river and from Lisbon and on uh, on the bottom it's in another region also next to Lisbon uh, but in the greater region uh, Lisbon region that is uh, in Sintra that is also um, uh, a, 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 let's say a, a palace or a castle that is Palacio da Pena and it's very beautiful these areas uh, Cascais, Estoril and Sintra are you know, next to Lisbon. And if you want to go just for, uh, don't have time to go to the rest of the country, but want to visit all that area, it's really very beautiful. Lisbon, Cascais, to Dil Sint, there's a lot of things to do and to visit. Very, yeah, very Lisbon nice. is really beautiful. It's yes. one of the best uh, cities in Europe. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's right. And then we have our island, the Azores and Madeira, it, which are also very, very beautiful, as I told, especially in terms of uh, landscape and nature. It's uh, great. The one on top, it's Azores. It's called... Um, uh, okay, now I can't Lagoa, remember the name. Lagoa de Cetidades. Lagoa de Cet Cet Cetidades. Is that... <laughs> I couldn't remember the name. The Lagoa of the Seven Cities. It yeah. is something that has two colors, and uh, there is a, a legend about that, about the princess and the shepherd, that they, you know, they were in love, and because the king didn't want her daughter to marry the shepherd, they cried all the time, and um, the tears, they cried so much, so much that the tears from the girl made the water green, and the tears from the boy made the water blue. That's why we have two different uh, colors. In the now I know where the Portugal football team will be next year. <laughs> 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 They'll be crying all night. All night. When they will cry <laughs> after the loss. Ah, I we, it, is, it is, it is uh, Azores, there are nine islands, and they have lo lots of kind of the lakes, this kind, and the water is so clean, so clean, so clean. You can imagine. It's very, very beautiful. And it's yeah. nine islands, and one of them is Pico. It's a volcano, and you can they see from one volcanoes. island to this the other. This is a volcano. This is a uh, mouth of volcano. Volcan. This, yes. uh, this, this lagoon. Exactly. It's very beautiful. The other island, Madeira, uh, below the picture below, is more, it's to Let's say you can choose two different type of uh, vacation there because we have Porto Santo, which is Fort Beach, and it's very good beach without many people, without tourism, without English people and German people. And I'm German kidding. people. <laughs> I'm kidding. Without many people, so it's great. And you can go from Funchal to Porto Santo by boat. It's very good. Or you can go directly and fly directly there. And it's very good because it's very hot, hot water and no crowd. So it's very good. And then in Funchal, that is the Fatima, other part. Yes? I can tell you that there were some Montenegrin people in both Madeira and Funchal. I loved it. And you yes. are not doing it a good, uh, <laughs> let's say, deal here because that's one of the most beautiful places in the world that I saw. Both of yes. them. I really it's love very, them. But you're it's right, no German, no English people, and most of all, no <laughs> French. You know, now now is a good time to go, because only the Portuguese people uh, there, because of the COVID. Yeah. And it's a safe, <laughs> a safe place. Yeah. It's a safe place, that's right. And that is very known, yes, 
Sorry. I remember that our tourist guide told us that the temperature of the water and outside of the temperature in Porto Santo is most of the year the same. Yeah, which yeah, makes it true. really, really good for swimming because you don't feel any kind of, you know, chill afterwards. Exactly. And it's really, really amazing. Place. But what is the reason that all the uh, British and all the Germans, they go to the Canary oh, Islands, but they're not to Madeira? Yeah. What is the reason? Yeah, but they, they go to Madeira too. It's a, a very, very strong market, uh, English and German. But this, this is not a big island. Okay, we are uh, limitation of offer, but the rest goes to Canarias. <laughs> but you know, you, yes, and also because people they don't want mass uh, market uh, tourism, ah. you know. Yeah. If I go to tour, if I want to do tourism or vacation, I don't go to Canarian Islands or to Balma de Mallorca in August and things like this. I don't. I don't want to be there with all, all that crowd. And so I think that people go. I know I, I have very good. Uh, Uh, friends uh, from Germany as well, and they all and they know where to go. They always say, no, 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 I don't want to go to those places where are all the tourists and all the Germans might feel, no, 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 I don't. And they go uh, especially to these places because they they can be there secure and safe and without too, too, too many people. I remember in Palma de Mallorca, I had to, to ask for a beer in German. I had to, you know, I have to order everything in German. <laughs> I was in Spain. Yeah, and, and Madeira is completely different to the uh, source. Yeah. So the, they don't have so many offers to hotels. Is a special tourist is tracking normally yeah. uh, for the island. And uh, you, you, the, 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 the big cities, Ponta Delgada, they don't have so many hotels uh, to, to stay. Uh, Madeira is completely different. It's uh, only one island. Yeah. And uh, of course, you have lots of, much more offer in Madeira than. Than source. Yes, and in Madeira you have uh, a habit of what? It's, uh, I mean, it's the festival of flowers that they have a lot of flowers there, and they have also lots of tourism is in the New Year's. The New they, Year, the end of yeah. the year. Is the, yeah. the, the, the strong, lots of cruise ships uh, that go yeah. there to see the the fireworks and everything. Uh, lots, lots of yeah. tourists go there to Madeira. It's like a tradition to spend the New Year's Eve in in Madeira, in Funchal. So to the right we have the Douro Valley that I was talking about uh, about the, the wine that is very very good wine and ve and the, the port wine as well. So the Douro and the the Douro the Casta let's say the Casta Douro is really very good, and then we have the port wine there as well. And now we have also cruise ships that go very small ones of course that go over uh, along the Douro River with tourists and uh, it, it, it's very nice as well. Then we have Évora, Évora in the south of Portugal, we I told you about the Lentejo, that is a completely different landscape and we have uh, lots of sun and it's more flat and it's very, very nice too, but it's a completely different uh, type of landscape. And this is one of the monuments that we have that is uh, the, the Diana temple from uh, the time of the Romans. Then we have the uh, on the, the down the Porto with the bridge and the boats that are ca that are ca uh, called Barco Rabelo, the Rabelo boats that carry, you know, the um, the wine, the the port wine, along the river. And Viana do Castelo is also in the in the in the um, on the in the north. It's in Minho, where is Vinho Verde that we discussed at the beginning. And uh, I just put this picture here just to show you that it's not only the fado, everything black, but this is a kind of uh, um, folklore. And this is the, 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 how they use it. I mean, the, um, this type, they use a lot of, uh, if you see the, the, the women, they have lots of gold, you know, and I don't know if you can see, but it's lots of gold around their necks and everything. They, they, it's like a, a tradition to go to the, to, the, to the street and showing that they are, you know, that they have lots of uh, money and, they, they, and their heritage from their grandmothers and mothers and that gave them all the, 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 the necklaces uh, from gold. So it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. Now it's not a good idea to go <laughs> around with that because it's dangerous. But it's one type of um, tradition as well in the north. 
Here is something that is a curiosity about uh, about Portugal. That's the Canyon of Nazaré. So it's something about. So we have lots of um, uh, uh, tradition in terms of um, surfing. We have different uh, regions for surfing, like. Um, uh, but Nazaré is, is known because of the biggest wave, uh, wave uh, surfed uh, all over the world. If you can see, it's a canyon under the water uh, that is formed, and then in a different uh, type. Uh, let's say I don't know when it is, but I think it's in. in, a, in a, I don't know if it's in November, something like that. People go from all over the world just to see, you know, the surfing. And uh, who made it internationally um, very famous was an American surfer, that is Garrett McNamara, that in 2011 he came to Portugal to surf and he, he, he really did uh, surf the biggest wave that it was 23 meters 77. Okay, it's very, very, it, it's important, it, it, it's impressive, <laughs> as you can see from the pictures. Uh, and, and this is another curiosity, but it's about, you know, the Tempuda. It's something that is uh, reflects also the presence of the Portuguese, um, in, uh, in all, in all over the world. And when we were with the missionaries and the traders, were lots of them, they lived also in, in Nagasaki. And the, uh, this was one type of food that they created, that is the buttered of deep fried vegetables and seafood. And it was invented by the Portuguese, but it's known as a uh, uh, Japanese food. But it's uh, actually a Portuguese invention. But it, it, uh, it's just a curiosity to be here. So let's go to the port wine. So we already discussed. It's, mm. It goes back <laughs> from the Roman time. So before Christ, they, they started to grow the, the, the grapes and the vineyards and made wine off the bank and in the banks of the, um, the river. So the river, so it was produced uh, lots of wine, and since then prosperity established with the kingdom of Portugal. It became a big part of uh, export in, in the Portuguese um, economy. So it has been it's the third oldest protected wine region in the world. We have also the Tokai in uh, Hungary that was before, and the Chianti in 1716 as well. So it is our uh, also, uh, you can see the, the, the boats that I was talking about, they, they carry uh, the wine along the river. And then you can see the cellars of the wine as well, and the, the vineyards that you can see around the, the river uh, coast. Foods. So, we have plenty of food. <laughs> we, have many, uh, we have many, many, many different dishes. So, I, I just took some parts of... Um, of different uh, plates and dish that we have. Uh, one thing that is very known internationally, and this is the only sweet that I've put here, is the pastage de Belém. That is a, a kind of um, of cake that is already internationally known and uh, distributed by many uh, people, people and restaurants and uh, pastries that are doing it also in some other countries because they. They, they had so much success here in Portugal that have every tourist, every person that comes to Portugal, they buy the pastéis de Belém. And uh, it's, it's a cream, a cream uh, pastry, but it's very good. And uh, the recipe, nobody knows. They only know it because we have also lots of, uh, you know, of, uh, I would say, of sweets and uh, traditions from the, um, the monasteries and... Uh, Lots of, uh, uh, I would say, eggs and uh, <laughs> and sugar, so very, very extremely sweet, but very, very good. But this one is the one that is uh, got most, more, more, uh, most famous in in the world and even in in, in the region of Lisbon. So what we know, have very, very good is the, the fish. Our fish, I would say, it's the best in the world. That's for sure. <laughs> I can say, I can say that. Now that's true because. If I go, I can go everywhere and see lots of good, nice fish, but they are not as tasty as ours because ours is from um, cold water and it's very good. For example, if you go to some uh, countries with very nice fish, like Brazil, Cuba, whatever, they are very nice, but they don't taste 
at all very good because it's from warm waters. And to be tasty, it must be from cold waters. And these are very, very, very good. So my, uh, every time I go, I eat fish, I miss the Portuguese fish. And of course, you have the grilled sardines. That is something that we eat in the summer. And it's very typical as well. It starts with the the, the, um, the, f- the fish from um, original f- um, saints. It starts in June and it is, we are still eating sardines. I love uh, uh, grilled sardines. Then we have, of course, the seafood, the codfish, uh, clams, uh, everything. So uh, the roasted piglet is also very well known because it's in the, um, the middle um, in the center of Portugal, and it's something that is baked and um, roasted. It's so good, so good. I never saw that. So you have to taste it as well. I, <laughs> so this is some kind of, uh, you know, different um, dishes that uh, are some, some are typical. One that is very important to, that we use also, but it's it more for... everything so delicious. Yes. <laughs> The Portuguese cuisine is something that is more for the winter time because it's lots of uh, it has lots of uh, meat and lots of uh, um, chorizo and things like this, so it's very very strong. So you need really to eat this in summertime, otherwise in summertime, sorry, in winter times, so otherwise it's very it's very strong food. So and because we were talking about codfish, it's like our national dish. So we have. Um, Portuguese people use a lot of codfish to, in, 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 our, in, our food, in our food, in our um, uh, food tradition, because it comes, uh, we don't uh, fish any cod uh, here in Portugal. It comes from, uh, let's say, from the waters like Newfoundland in Canada, Norway, Iceland, everything, all the colder waters. And this, this started to be uh, consumed in Portugal uh, also before the, the age of the discoveries because people, uh, the Portuguese sailors, they traveled to the world, they spent lots of months abroad, and the fish was a food source. And because cod fish was something that could be salted, then it could be, you know, preserved a long time. Uh, so it was a way for them to, to use it and also to replace uh, because the Catholic uh, search, uh, Church has the um, this, this uh, period where uh, in Easter time you can't eat uh, meat, for example, this was something like you could, you know, replace the meat with the codfish because it's very strong. You can uh, uh, cook it in, in different ways. So uh, wherever you go, you can, you can uh, find the codfish. The thing is that before it was a, um, a, a food for the people that were not so wealthy, just for the poor people and today it's very it's very expensive it's it's not for the poor people it's for the rich people let's say because it's really more expensive nowadays um and here we say that portuguese have a thousand and one ways of cooking codfish and that's true i mean here you have you can see also some examples of dishes from codfish okay this is all codfish but we have lots, 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 lots of recipes. It's a never-ending story. <laughs> you can eat codfish every day without knowing that you are eating codfish. You know, it's something like that. I remember I had a friend who said, oh, I, don't like, I don't know if I like codfish so much. Okay, don't and, worry, and, I'm going to give Portuguese you. also go very, very late into the restaurant. What is the reason for that? Because the Germans... Mm, not that much. Early evening and you go 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock? No. No, no, that's not true. That's the Spanish. Okay. It's different. In Portugal, we have the same, let's say, more or less the same habits uh, to eat as the, the rest of the Europe. Because we have lunch around, we start, we can start, let's say, 12.30, but the, the, until 2. If you go to a restaurant at 3, they, they say the, the, the kitchen is closed. We don't serve anymore. Uh, and in the evening, you can start from 7.30, Okay. Until 10, uh, well, it depends. Okay. Of, of course, it depends on the restaurant, but the habits are not that. Nowadays, if you eat a little bit later, that's because of the tradition, not tradition, but habit of the people that, uh, you know, work until later, and then they arrive later at home, and <laughs> and they, they use, but not to the restaurants. And nowadays, in some restaurants, it's so strange because you... Almost of the, not now because we are at COVID period, but in some restaurants, 
I remember that I had to book the restaurant either for seven or nine because it was like two um, shifts, you see? But if you go to Spain, for example, if you want to have lunch at um, one o'clock at 1 p.m., they don't serve you. They say, no, we are open only after 1.30. <laughs> Even in, in hotels, it's... Uh, but it's not the same. We have uh, the habits are more like the rest of Europe. We are don't, we don't have the abend brot like you have. We have also normally the, the the dinner time. That's why sometimes it's uh, later than in Germany, for example, or in the Netherlands. But we have the dinner time as well. But it's seven. We'd say eight would be the the average. Okay, eight o'clock. But not nine or ten. Of if course, it's ten, it's too late. Of course, with me, you always dinner at around 10, you know. Yes, cheese. You're more Spanish than Portuguese then. <laughs> no, 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 but I, 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 have, I have another opinion. Uh, we are south and normal. We are not like Spanish, but we are not like the rest of Europe. We dinner much more uh, later. Not normal. later than 8. Yeah, normally so, in Lisbon, uh, 9, 9.30. But maybe... Uh, Maybe, Maybe I, you go to different areas because, well, I don't know. You are not going to start again like last time. I think one is for Sporting and the other is for Benfica Lisbon. No, 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 no. It's okay, it's okay. Ah, but no, 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 no. In my opinion, it's not. We, we, the hour is not the same as the rest of Europe, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Of course not. But we are not definitely not like the Spanish. That's for sure because I've lived in both countries. And I know that. Nobody, <laughs> nobody is like Spanish. Is one of the problems in Spain. They have lots of Spanish people. It's a problem. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so let's go. <laughs> uh, and now I have to finish with this. So this was from the 4th of September. I don't have the new, um, the new numbers. I mean, I have, but I didn't have time to get them. But I know that today we lowered a little bit. On the 4th of September, it increased a little more. We had 406 um, new cases. Uh, the total ones that we have confirmed are 59,000. We had 1,833 deaths. And uh, this is it. So if you can see in our map, you can see that uh, the region of uh, Lisbon and uh, in the north near Porto are the ones, of course, that have more concentrated uh, people that are infected. Uh, now we are going to see if it's going to get, because yesterday it was 240 on, uh, new ones. Today it was already 380, so it's Is it changing. important? From tourism, or is it because you are spending, of course, the summer outside and you're doing yeah. it uh, intra Portuguese? Yes, yeah. more than that. The people they start to return to the to the vacancies, the holidays, and the schools they are open. They starting now, and uh, the 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 the, camp, the the people need to work, and the, the movement of the people starting, and it is normal. But I think it's controlled. But yeah, and we think so, but let's hope. Because yeah, we, 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 we just know. in Germany the discussion because we do a lot of testing and as more you test, as more you yeah, detect. It's the same now, here. You have now more infections amongst the younger people. On the other mm -hmm. hand, the younger people yeah, are not that. It's the same here. Uh, the so same that's here. why we have, um, let's say, the, um, the the death rate is going down, even having more infections. Yeah, is, yeah, but on the other hand, now the question is what happens in autumn and winter times. Yeah. If people cannot, uh, let's say, easily let fresh air into the buildings because the aerosols have been identified as the most dangerous infection means, huh? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. transmission means. No. That's it. And so because we are a Catholic country, we have hope. <laughs> we will be fine. So I have some uh, picture here from uh, Basilica of Fatima. Uh, as you can see uh, on the top, on the bottom, you can see how many people there usually every year goes on the 13th of May because it's the day when the Virgin Mary appeared to the um, to the shepherds of Fatima, the three uh, uh, children. 
And on top, you see the, the Basilica. I mean, uh, so we have lots, lots of tourists from all over the world that come to Fatima that are Catholic. And this is our, our um, the main, the main uh, uh, image of, the, uh, of Portugal in terms of Catholicism. And then we have, of course, important on the right side, we have the Cristo Rei, that is, uh, and the bridge over the Tagus, uh, 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 the, the Jesus regarding Lisbon. Okay, so it's uh, it's very nice. We have in the, during the day and during the night. It looks a little bit. Some people say, oh, I have something in Lisbon when I get to uh, when I'm flying over Lisbon and arriving at Lisbon. It's, uh, it seems to be that I'm arriving either in San Francisco or in Rio. <laughs> Because I have the two flavors <laughs> with the bridge. So the, and the, the, statue, the statue in Rio de Janeiro is brought from the Portuguese to Rio de Janeiro? No, no. Okay. As far as I know, no. Do you know, Carlos? No, I don't think so. No. No, no, I don't think so. And that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> so... Fatima, how are you feeling now? You were very nervous in the beginning. Yeah, how because I was feeling? late. I was really nervous with myself because I wanted to be earlier and I, I was lighter. No, it was, it was fantastic. And now the thing, a question to Anuja. Anuja, where are you going to spend your next vacation? Uh, Italy. Oh, that's <laughs> no answer. Uh, we have to... Start from scratch again, Fatima. You have to okay. do the presentation again because Fat Anuja has not understood the concept. Uh, it doesn't mean that she doesn't come to Portugal. After Italy, she will go to Portugal. She has to visit all the countries. <laughs> Italy is very beautiful, so it's a good choice. This, hello, Italy, always. I don't know. It's not changing. Yes, yes. No, no. Italy is wonderful. It's a great country. It's very beautiful. But of course, you are not going to go every every year to the same country, so you have the chance to go <laughs> the year after to Portugal. Absolutely. Oh, it was a fantastic presentation. I, I learned again a lot. Lord, yes. thank you. <laughs> so, and and uh, so, have you been flying the last weeks and months? On uh, Carlos, have you been flying somewhere, or you always stayed at Lisbon? I, I was in Madeira. Uh, oh. In Teletrabalho, okay. uh, just for three days, and I, I stay uh, two weeks <laughs> in front, working in front of uh, the sea. Very nice, very nice. In June, end of June. Wow, very good. And Fatima, you you were not traveling at all, isn't it? No, not at all. Well, because not not at all. I mean, I was trying to to. Just inside Portugal. But, I've uh, been, Daniel, we, in, in PGA, TAP Express, we are working full since uh, 1 of July. Ah. Uh, sometimes uh, I pass two, three days in the office. Today it was a day in the office. And my team uh, still working uh, one day in the office and the rest at home. Okay. And yes. you are, uh, what's the capacity you are flying at the moment in Europe? Now we are like, we work like that because we we are flying with the whole uh, E-Jet uh, 12 uh, and uh, manage, uh, we manage the booking in, all day, 24 hours to, to change with the, the 320 and we have some flights to long range to to Brazil, Africa, and North America. Some, not, uh, but now we are only to PGI flights uh, full. And uh, some flights are okay. We manage day by day. We put uh, three days uh, in uh, per day for uh, Spain. Uh, and uh, with the information, the media, we do it only one, but now it's okay for, from, uh, from Germany, it's okay. Uh, we fly Dusseldorf, Munich, uh, Berlin, uh, uh, but we need to manage day by day. Yeah. Uh, that's the problem for the entire industry. You never know yeah. what is next week. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's fine. Let's hope that things I, change. <laughs> I was reading uh, yesterday that in some Asian markets, they're actually flying. They flew more in August 2020 than they did in 2019. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. 
And they said that the, the I, I don't remember if they cited how many airlines, how many Asian airlines did that, but they believed that the ones that did fly more had more capacity because they'd add a couple of, uh, of aircraft to their fleet. But so <laughs> they, I don't know, why is Asia recovering so much more quickly? Are they ordering there? I mean, I'm being facetious, but are they, they ordering? They have a secret, capacity? they have a secret. What is their secret? Because I don't know. In the rest of the world, people yes. are not flying. Yeah, I don't know. That's true. But I see the the same uh, new uh, the yeah. the paper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I think there are also more people living in Asia. So if let's say 10% is flying, absolute figures are maybe more than in Europe or other European people past, are more, more scared. It's the past year over year, though, that's quite something. Okay. They surpass year over year for August 2019 to August 2020. And the entire world had a, a stellar flying year last year. So. Hmm. I Daniel, know. I need to go. Thank you for the invitation. Are you going to join the fatigue risk management session on Thursday? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. I hope. I hope. Good. And, Very and the airline follows 29 uh, in the virtual uh, uh, <laughs> why to airline forum you know yeah, you can forward, maybe you can forward me your invitation link and then I can also oh, join cool yeah, I yeah. Send you. I send send you. Me, yeah? yeah I send you I send you <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> and we stay together yeah we do some kisses like in the past yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys Daniel so nice to see you bye 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 thank you Fatima bye. I need to leave also thank bye -bye. you okay bye bye thank you so you are also going to join the uh, fourth aviation women panel, Fatima? I hope so, because I was expecting to, to join the other one. But uh, I, my vice president called me, no, you have to join my now. And I said, sorry, I have to go to the no aviation problem. panel. No sorry for that, because it's the third. The third, I said, no, second of September, I can, you know, because I had it in my agenda and I really want it. But I want to be in the fourth. I, I, I have to. <laughs> and I saw, I saw. I think we are now almost at 40 for the Old Girls Club. More and more women join this club right. too. That's so, great. Yeah. That's great. I, I think if we if we reach a critical mass, and suddenly we will be millions, and then the wave cannot be stopped anymore. <laughs> oh, you already can't stop us. You've I, 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 know, I know, I know, I know. We are unstoppable anyway. So I, Medlenka, I, I, I Medlenka, are I, you? Oh, no, it was Sintra. I attended a session this morning with, shoot, where's his name? Martin Perrette was presenting, and the invite was sent to me by Adrian Hamilton Manns, also from IBS, Daniel? Yeah, that is uh, the REST uh, Res 2020 session. Yeah. That is the reservation system, yeah? And? Yeah. It was really interesting. They're going to do a second one. You should join. Uh, yeah, I have registered. I have registered for certain sessions. And uh, yeah, yeah, we have very good stuff in our company. We have a lot yeah. of secrets, which we are now little by little disclosing to the external world. That's so great. It was, um, <laughs> Martin Perrette from Northridge Consulting was the one that was the, the person who presented today. Yeah, and um, um, Adrian is going to put the session online, of course, so that you could you can have a look at it. And tomorrow we have a session about uh, building the bridge um, between airline operations and air cargo and then fatigue mm -hmm. risk management. Yeah, we do a lot of stuff. On the other hand, we are discussing also internally, are people somehow global, globally spammed or flat with webinar and, and oh, virtual yes. meeting invitations? Are they somehow saying, oh, not again, such a session? Or it, because on one hand, Reading also the news, it's saying that goes to 2021. So how to keep connected and inform people without these virtual sessions? On the other hand, I can understand if you have every day a session, you're somehow getting tired to to get another one. Yeah. So it has always yeah. a point to count. Yeah. I, I I I mean, for me, I'm not experiencing Zoom fatigue. I can't. I am not in your in your boat in your shoes at all. But I can understand that people, especially with school starting again, and with, for example, my daughter's going to school online right now because her school is under construction. So anyone in that same boat having to do zooms with their kids, zooms for work, and then adding additional zooms on top of it, I can totally understand how people would be uh, up to here. Yeah. What time is the cargo 
tomorrow? That is very early. It's nine o'clock my time. That's okay. too, too early for you. But maybe if it's a good one, we are going to schedule maybe uh, another one with the target time for westbound. Um, and then we will see. So I, I saw the slides and Christian is doing a good job and he puts out some very controversial questions. So I'm sure we are doing this also a second time. <laughs> very well. <laughs> Good. So it was another great okay. virtual happy hour session. And uh, thank you very much, Fatima. I hope you are thank feeling you. now relaxed and happy. I am, of course. Uh, because it was such a happy hour. Imagine after presenting you. Portugal, you're not feeling happy. That would be a contradiction. <laughs> so hopefully having you soon again and yes. stay healthy and safe and uh, have a good evening. And you too. And thank you for attending as well. Thank you for thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.